Okay. Welcome back, guys. Hope you had a good time. Uh, good break, decent break. Some of you didn't go on a break. <laughs> well, it's fine. I hope everybody online had a good break. Uh, cool, cool. So we've uh, we've completed chapter four, the power of praise, um, it's understanding the power of praise and the expressions of praise and whatnot. So now we dive into uh, chapter five. Chapter five, um, page eighteen. We start going a little bit more deeper into uh, understanding what worship is. Okay, in chapter one. It was all about definitions of worship, understanding uh, worship at a very basic uh, level. Uh, whether we're going to go dive in a little deeper. You all ready to dive in a little deeper? Can we go a little bit more deeper? Hmm? <laughs> Can we go? <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah. It's just Francis's expression of going deeper is amazing. So. <laughs> But lovely. Uh, yeah, so chapter five is simple. What is worship? Okay, once again, just to go through the definition, uh, dictionary definition of what worship is, it's intense love or admiration. It's not just love, it's intense love. Okay. A service showing reverence, to express reverence. To have a sense of awe, to bow low to. Okay, uh, beautiful words, isn't it? Uh, it's intense love. It's not just love. It's intense. It's the intensity is a little bit more higher. Okay, the service showing reverence, uh, to express reverence, uh, to have a sense of awe, um, to bow low to, and then goes on to say worship. Uh, I mean, we've learned this. Worship comes from this. Uh, Ancient Latin word worthship, right? You're ascribing worth to, okay? Uh, yogya, that's the Hindi word, isn't it? Worth, is that right? Worth, worthy. Uh, I think that's worthy, isn't it? Okay. Um, so that's what, what all what worship is. But uh, let's begin. The first point in what worship is worship is the recognition of who God is is okay worship is recognition okay or recognizing who god is what is the meaning you know this is coming <laughs> what is the meaning of recognition familiar with okay thanks friend recognizing or recognition what are different ways how do you recognize something Hindi me. What what does it mean? The what? Okay. I wouldn't know. I'm just gonna say agree. <laughs> I'm gonna trust you <laughs> and say okay. Yeah. To know, okay, to right, to recognize. Uh, have we built enough rapport uh, where you can recognize my voice? <laughs> like if I was not in the room. Really? All right. Okay. Makes me feel good. <laughs> and so you can recognize uh, a person, a voice, or if they're, I mean, who, whoever you are close to, and but you've learned to recognize their voice. Uh, you've learned to recognize how they look. Uh, right. I'm not going to look at Prince and uh, it's like, hey, Francis. They're like, oh, no, you look like Francis. No, I'm recognizing it all wrong. Right. Um, so that's, you are recognizing. For the, the person for who they are, right? Their voice or how they look and whatnot. What else? When you're on a long road trip and you say, I recognize this billboard, I recognize this restaurant, I've been here many years ago. You say that, isn't it? Uh -huh. They're like, yeah, bro, I recognize this. Um, I recognize her. Yeah, I saw her a long time ago. <laughs> Some of the boys. Uh, what else? To know, yeah, yeah. Surya also says to know, yeah. Recognize, recognize. Okay, so when someone has done a good work, like you appreciate that person, isn't it? Yes or no? And so you give them a medal of honor or whatever, right? So isn't that also called recognition? Right? You also recognize that person for what they have done. 
Yes or no? What they've accomplished. So now when you put it all into this context of worship, when we say worship, <clears throat> worship is the recognition of who God is. So the question to us, Christians or worshippers is, first thing, can you recognize God? Not do you, but can you? I, asked, I started off by saying, uh, have you built a relationship enough where you can recognize my voice, right? Yes or no? So have you built a relationship deep enough where you can say that I can recognize God is speaking? I'm not trying to make you feel bad or anything. I'm just, this is again a question for you to answer to yourself. Understood? Right? So a worshiper is able to recognize who God is. One is for who he is, right? And the other thing I said is for everything that he has done. So let's talk about the second part, right? Are you able to recognize God's goodness in your life? Name a few. What does that mean? I'm asking you to testify. Yeah, Sean. Yeah, it's small things, yeah. Yeah, 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 I mean, it's, it's simple things, isn't it? Recognizing who God is, yeah, sorry, go ahead, you know. Blessed to know him, yeah, yeah. I mean, we can take time and we can all testify, isn't it? And it's all of that is acknowledging and recognizing what God has done for us, isn't it? For you personally, he made it very personal on the cross, right? He died for you. He rose again from the grave for you. Are you able to recognize that? Okay. So a worshiper will can always recognize the presence of God, his voice, for who he is. Okay. Uh, let's go to John chapter twenty-one. Thanks, Nina. Nina says, his care and protection, provision, good health. Yeah. Suddenly, over the last two years, we can all appreciate good health, you know, since the time COVID hit. Uh, in the last two and a half years, uh, or two years, I think, uh, the number of times I would have said, I'm going to pray for you, I've said it more than the last 20 years or so. So, yeah, suddenly we can appreciate good health, you know, um, our health, our parents' health, uh, our loved ones, the health of our loved ones. Um, all of that is recognizing that he's kept us safe. He's provided for us in the times of uh, trouble, right? Um, okay, so it's John chapter 21. Oops, I forgot to turn. Apologies. Okay, uh, are we all there in John chapter 21? Okay, I just want to read uh, for us. Uh, just uh, follow me, okay? John chapter 21, verse 1 onwards, it says, Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples. So, listen to those words, okay? Afterward, Jesus appeared again. That means he's appeared before, right? He appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. It happened this way. It means once upon a time. That's the story there. So Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. Verse 3. I am going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night, they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciple did not realize that it was Jesus. Realize or recognize? Are you with me? So verse 4, early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, 
but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Okay, so some more context for the text that we are reading is at this point of time, Jesus has been crucified. He's also been risen from the dead. Okay, um, so he has also met with the disciples before. That's why the verse one says he appeared to disciples again. But verse four is fascinating when it says the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. I mean, come on. Come on. Three and a half years or so, you've walked with the man. You've seen him multiply the food, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, right? Fed, feed the 5,000, 4,000. You, you've seen him walk on the water. You've seen him calm the sea. You've seen him being crucified. You've been with him. You've Some of them, three of them were in the Mount of Transfiguration. Right? Uh, they've been with Jesus with the highs and the lows. Like I said, he was their rabbi. They were very close with him. They walked very close with him. The dust that came off his sandals were on their sandals. But it says they did not realize that it was Jesus. And now he begins to call out to them, verse 5. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the other side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Are you guys with me so far? Yes? Mm. Verse 7. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved, John, he said to Peter, It is the Lord. It is the Lord. Okay, I want to just stop there. I want to. I, I don't want to read what happens after that. But what happens after that is amazing. Um, so again, the context is Jesus is dead. Uh, in disciples' mind, Jesus is dead. The the one person that they looked up to for three and a half years is gone. The one person that they've spent their life day and night. They have left their families. They've walked with him across the nation, up and down. Jerusalem to Galilee, back to Jerusalem, north, south, east, west. They walked with him. He was their leader, and now he is no more. And so Peter's reaction is that he is going back to do what he always knew to do. That is fishing. I don't know what the tax collector was doing. He said, okay, because he said, I'm going fishing, I'm going to come with you too. Okay. Uh, but thank God for friends like that, <laughs> who's going to be with you. Uh, so. I'm not trying to accuse Peter here for what I'm saying, but then Peter is in an all-time low. He is depressed. He is, he is down. He's hit rock bottom. And so does most of the disciples. So that's the context here. And then they're trying to catch fish. They don't recognize Jesus. I don't know how that happens. And long story short, shh. Peter. John is nudging. Peter, it's the Lord. Something tells me that John was a worshipper. We read it time and time again in his Gospels that he was always rest himself on, his, on, on the bosom of Jesus, right? He would always be right next to him. He would just be there next to him. Right? In the previous chapter, John chapter 20, uh, it says, uh, when Mary Magdalene, uh, you know, I'm just not going to read the whole thing. It says, Mary Magdalene come and, comes and tells this disciple, saying, they have taken away my Lord. And so Peter and John starts running to the tomb. And then it says, the one, the one whom Jesus loved, uh, he overtook Peter and reached the tomb first. John had something about him. 
And out of the four Gospels, only John talks about worship. Which chapter? Chapter 4. John chapter 4, verse 22 onwards, you can read. Father seeks worshippers. Out of the four Gospels, only the Gospel of John, only John talks about worship. And now in the very last chapter, very last chapter of the Gospel of John, we see that only of all the disciples that are in the boat, he is able to recognize the presence and the voice of Jesus. Are you with me? So a worshiper. Everybody say worshiper. One more time, worshiper. A worshiper will always recognize the presence of Jesus. Are you with me? Right? His voice, everything that he has done for you, who he is. If you are able to recognize this about God, you are a worshiper. You are on the right track. Right? Are you with me, guys? Right, so uh, in, in your notes, it says, uh, in the very act of recognition, we do two things, identify and acknowledge. Identify and acknowledge. Okay, so what does that mean? So it's one thing for me to say, okay, I identify Rin. I can look at her and say, okay, this is Rin. Right? And then it is also possible after identifying, I completely ignore her presence. Don't say hi to her. Don't have a conversation with her and not acknowledge her presence and just move away. Yes? So here, worship is saying that you don't recognize recognition or recognizing is two parts. You identify, but you also acknowledge that someone's presence. Right? Um, there's something about identifying and acknowledging. Uh, it's you know why this point is so beautiful and I like this point is God is our father, isn't it? Yes or no? Right? Um, he is known as even before he's laid the foundations of the earth. That's what the Bible says, isn't it? He called us by name. All the days of our life has been predestined, preordained by him. All the days of our life has been preordained by him. Even before he laid the foundations of the earth, he knew us by name. Yes or no? So he knows everything about us, inside out. Ball is in our court. Do we know him? I can testify this uh, uh, as, uh, uh, once again, sorry to give a very personal example. But then, um, so I said, I have a, a four-year-old son, right? I she was born four years ago, four-year-old son, four years ago. Okay. Um, so. You know, I've, I've, I didn't know it was, we didn't know it was him or her, but I've seen him from the time he was a dot when we went for the first scan. You know, you can, the, was it ultrasound scan? Yeah. <laughs> you can, you know, from that dot. I've known him and I've seen him grow in the womb and I know that he is my son. Yes. But my world changed when he recognized that I am his father. When he pointed fingers and said, Dada, when that happened, it's the best thing ever. It's like, okay, now I can die types. You know? <laughs> That's the beauty of us as God's children. When we recognize our father, he takes great pleasure. He smiles. He has a smile from like from east to west when we recognize who he is. Right? Are you with me? So that's what two things are identifying and acknowledge. So worship is encountering and acknowledging God's existence. Um, just reading off your notes. Um, his nature, character, his majesty, greatness, goodness, infiniteness, holiness, and love. So I want to read that part one more time. So worship is encountering and acknowledging God's existence. Okay, you acknowledge that He exists, He is there. Right? His nature and character, 
his majesty, his greatness, his goodness, his infiniteness, his holiness, his love. And the list can go on, right? So the question once again to you all is, are you recognizing all of this about God? Can you recognize all of this about God? Right? If you're calling yourself a worshiper, these are the questions that you need to answer yourself. Right? Psalm 95, verse 6 and 7, it says, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. What is happening? There's a recognition of God as our Creator, as our Maker. Right? Let us worship Him because He made us. He's our Creator. If He's a Creator, we are created. Right? For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is. Okay, that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Okay, um, and we've read uh, we've read a little bit about uh, from Revelation and Isaiah and whatnot in the last class, right? Uh, recognizing His holiness. Um, so that's the first point, guys. It's quite simple and uh, straightforward. Is worship is recognizing who God is, identifying and acknowledging who God is. With me? Yep. Okay. All right. Those of you online, all good. Uh, the second point is, worship is reverence for God. Worship is reverence for God. So the note says, to rever is to regard or treat with adoration and utmost fearful respect. Yes, the Lord is our Father. He calls us His friends. He is also the soon and coming King of kings and the Lord of lords whose eyes are like flames of fire and his feet are like fine brass. Okay. Um, but I hope you understand uh, the, the meaning of the word river or revere uh, is utmost respect, right? And to put it simply, utmost and fearful respect. Uh, Psalm 5 or 7 says, But as for me, I will come into your house in the multitude of your mercy, in fear of you, I will worship toward your holy temple. Psalm 96 verse 9 says, Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of the holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Uh, we use this word awesome, isn't it? Yeah? Everybody say awesome. Yeah, it's sim the root word, the meaning of that simply means terror. Okay. so. Um, so when, when we know that, okay, yes, he is our father, but he is also the king of all kings. He is the Lord of all lords. He is the ancient of days, the Bible says, right? From everlasting to everlasting, he is God. He is eternity, right? He is the alpha. He is the omega, right? He is omnipresent, omniscient, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-sufficient God. Right? He's so powerful and he's so mighty that heaven needs no sun. His the light of his face lights up all of heaven. Right? Amen. So when we realize that we are in the presence of this being, uh we need to rever his presence, right? Um anybody seen this movie uh, called Chronicles of Narnia? Chronicles of Narnia, yeah, uh, it's a, it's a nice movie. It's it's uh, from the book uh, C.S. Lewis uh, has written. Um, yeah, thanks, Krisha. So uh, it's 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 a very nice movie. Uh, I you you can watch it. So uh, you know you know there are three kids in that movie, and then there's a be there are beavers, and one of the kids I think oh sorry four four okay four kids yeah. Uh, so one the youngest one asks uh, four, huh? okay. 
Okay. So the youngest one asks, uh, there's this uh, king of this land called Narnia, and the king of that land is a lion, and the name of the lion is Aslan. Aslan, yeah. Um, so the kid does not know who you know uh, the king is, and so he she asks the beaver, is like, so who is Aslan? And the beaver says, uh, he's a lion. Um, and uh, and the, for that the kid asks, uh, a lion? Is he dangerous? And, like, and the beaver says, of course he is dangerous. He is a lion. And then he says, but he is a good lion. But he's good, right? So our father is good. But we should never forget that he is also the lion of the tribe of Judah. <laughs> yeah, right? So that's the second point, um, is worship uh, is reverence for God, acknowledging his presence, uh, revering in his presence, coming to his presence with reverence in our hearts. Right? And the third point, worship is communion with God. Worship is communion with God, okay? A communion is sharing or exchanging of intimate thoughts and innermost feelings. Worship is going beyond the surface and getting real with God. Sharing intimate thoughts and feelings requires a close relationship intimacy without relationship and intimacy there is no worship can i read that last line again without relationship and intimacy there is no worship okay this is a very important point i'm going to keep saying this every point is important but worship is communion with god okay look at that word communion so many words come from that okay come in unity Community, right? Um, so that's a symbol of us coming together as one, right? Communion. So you're becoming as one with uh, in in your relationship with the other person. Uh, holiness. Okay, everybody say holiness. One more time, say holiness. Holiness is not a result. Is not a result of cosmetics okay what is cosmetic uh, you can't put some makeup and say i'm holy now you can't just wear white shirt and white pant and say i'm holy you know you get what i'm saying yeah you, you can wear all the jewelry you want you can not wear all the jewelry you want holiness we as human beings have reduced it to such a cheap level I am using that word cheap, yeah. We've reduced holiness to as a result of cosmetics. If I do so and so, so and so, so and so, if I do this, if I do that, if I don't have beard, <laughs> apparently I'm very unholy then. So <laughs> um, holiness is not a result of cosmetics. It is a result of communion with God. Are you with me? Right? One of the repeating words or recurring words is intimacy. Isn't it? When a husband and a wife has been intimate in their relationship, or physically intimate, what is the relation, what is the result or the fruit of their intimacy? Is a child, isn't it? Yes or no? So holiness is a fruit. What comes out of your intimate relationship with God? Okay, so let's look at that word intimacy. Everybody say intimacy. Okay, those online type intimacy in the chat. Those in the chat, okay. So look at that word intimacy uh, and you break it down. You get this, right? Into me you see because i show you that's what intimacy is right when you say that i have an intimate relationship with someone and i say intimacy is into me you see because i show you 
It gets with me, right? So because I trust you so much, I'm going to open up my heart to you. You are going to know the deepest secrets of my heart because of our relationship, right? And so when God is inviting us to say, commune with me, have this intimate relationship with me, he's saying, I love this line from the Psalms that says, search me and know me and see if there's any wicked ways or sinful ways in me. Are you with me? Psalm 139, right? Search me and know me. That's what, uh, you know, that's what an intimate relationship will, will do. It will make himself vulnerable and say, it's like, you know what? I trust you so much. It's okay. You know, search me and tell me if I'm wrong. Right? Tell me if something's wrong with me. That's one of the things. But it also can mean, it's like, I want to show you something. Right? So there are things in our heart that God wants to see and realign, recheck. Right, I think Matthew chapter 15, uh, verse 16. Um, I'm not sure, guys. Matthew chapter one, one moment. Uh, if, if it's not 12. Yeah, sorry, Matthew chapter 15. Oh, yeah, Matthew chapter 15, verse 19. Matthew 15, 19, it says, for out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander, etc., etc. Okay, Matthew chapter 15, verse 19. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. That's when the psalm is saying, search me and know me. Because my heart is capable of all these things that's just mentioned here. Right? And realign. So remember, communion, communication. Right? Say communication. Okay? So when you have a conversation with a person, it's a two-way thing. Right? It's not one way. Right? You speak, you, the other person speaks. Right? So in your commun relationship with God, You've opened up your heart. You've invited him to come and realign, you know, check your heart. But on the other side, he also wants to open up his heart. With me? Okay. I want to show you my heart. Come. He takes you in. He starts revealing things to you. He starts speaking to you of what his plan for you is, what his purpose for you is. Are you with me? And that is also worship, guys. Okay, so it's simple. Um, that's the third point. It is communion um, with God. So, what are the first three points? What we've covered? Worship is first one is recogni recognition, recognizing who God is. Second, reverence for God. Third, it's communion with God. Yeah, and holiness is a result of communion with Him. Okay. Um, sorry, I just want to just take some time, a couple of minutes, and I also want to emphasize about the seriousness of uh, of holiness and, and the life of holiness that God is expecting us to live. Uh, James chapter four says, "Draw near to Him, and He will He will go away from you." What? Draw near to me, uh, him, and he will draw near to you. Okay. So when you when you come closer to someone, you're you're going away from some of other things, isn't it? Yes or no? So when you're drawing near to God, you're you are drawing away from sin, the, the ways of the world, the things of the world, right? And that is also a result of communion. Okay, guys. So let's go to last uh, the last point. Uh, and we'll end with this. Worship is our response to an encounter with God. Okay, Worship is our response to an encounter with God. Okay, um, Someone read Psalm 47, verse 7, please.
Psalm 47 verse 7. Okay. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with understanding. Okay, so what is the why is this verse there here? So worship is a response to an encounter with God. Right? So worship in itself is not an encounter. Worship is a response. Okay? When do you respond? What does a response mean? If I ask a question, you respond. Isn't it? Right, so that's what it is. So worship is a response to an encounter with God. So we read that in Revelation chapter 1, um, verse 12 and 17. Okay, look, just very quickly because it's in the notes. Um, Revelation 1, 12 to 17, it says, Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet and girded about the chest with a golden band. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass as it refined in a furnace. His voice as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars. Out of his mouth went a, sh a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. When I saw him encounter, and when I saw him, Response, I fell at his feet as dead. Okay? Um, worship, an encounter, with an encounter, there is a revelation of who God is. Are you with me? Okay. When an encounter happens, there is a revelation of who God is. Okay? So who he is, what he's done. Um, let's read Psalm 145, verse 2 and 3, very quickly. Because we worship to the degree of our revelation. Okay? We worship to the degree of our understanding of the revelation that we've received. Thanks. Okay? So... Uh, one of the uh, the amplified translation says every day with its new reasons will i bless you affectionately and gratefully okay i want to read that one more time very slowly it says every day with its new reasons i will bless you affectionately and greatly okay so every day with new reasons simply means fresh revelations Okay, every day with new reasons. That means there has been a new revelation of who God is for that day. Are you with me? And verse 3 says, Great is the Lord and highly to be praised, and His greatness is so vast and deep as to be unsearchable. Right? Unsearchable gladness or unsearchable greatness is... It just simply speaks of his inability uh, to exhaust the revelation of who he is. Okay. You can keep searching and searching and searching and searching. Like there is no end to his greatness. Right? And if you remember of Isaiah chapter 6, one, uh, one verse says, the train of his robe was filling. Okay? It just didn't say filled. It's a present continuous. It's just going on and on and on. So that means there is no end to his reign. There is no end to his greatness. Okay? So as worship as a response, with an encounter comes a revelation. And in the last class, I asked you, uh, one of the things I was emphasizing is the importance of praising him for who he is. Right? We can praise him for so many other things, but we need to praise him for who he is is and that needs that comes with a revelation with an encounter are you with me so i just want to pause here um so there's four things right uh, the fourth point is worship is a response to an encounter with god right 
worship is our response to an encounter with God. Okay, you can all close your Bibles and you can look at me. Worship, praise and worship is a response to our encounter with God. An encounter leads us to a revelation of who He is. But what leads us to an encounter? What leads us to an encounter? Encounter is not Golima. It's not that. <laughs> Sorry? Desire? Okay. Thirst within. Yeah, thanks, Jashan. Yeah. I can take you through like different characters in the Bible. Um, one of the examples is from John chapter 20, the previous chapter that we read from John. Uh, you can, but just to make, just to give you two points, two things that simply leads us to an encounter is your hunger and your desperation for Him. How much, how, how hungry are you for God? How desperate are you? That means, how much are you willing to sacrifice? How desperate are you for Him? And how faithful are you going to be in your search for him? Right? So when it, the journey begins with you, right? When you begin to search for him, seek him, the Bible says, you seek me and you will find me, right? And in that, when, at the point of meeting, there is an encounter, and encounter leads to a revelation. And as a response to that revelation, you worship. Okay? So I want to stop there, guys. Uh, and I want you to go back and to meditate and ponder on these points. Will you do that for me? Will you guys do that? Yeah? Go back home and ponder and meditate on these words, uh, on these points. Okay? We'll stop here and uh, we'll meet again next week. All right. Thanks, everyone online also for joining. Uh, Viku, Surya, Karen, good to see you. Arila, Rohit, you guys take care. Uh, have a lovely day. I'll see you all next week. Bye bye. Thanks, Krishna. Take care. Bye bye. Bye, Nina.